I think it's important for us to highlight a variety of um, issues and people um, who are affecting the Asian American community. So um, they've been very active um, as activists and academics and as writers. And um, this is actually the first exhibition that we've done based on research. Um, and it's not pure art, but the photography is beautiful. And I think the four years of research um, and interviews that um, support it um, were very important to our community. And um, that makes it important to our gallery and to Pearl River. I grew up in Queens and I came to Chinatown every weekend as a young girl and uh, I spent a lot of time with my Paw Paw and, um, and uh, I just remember the food and the smell and um, being able to uh, be here for everything really doctor's appointments and buying new jeans maybe getting eyeglasses and spending time you know watching uh, movies kung fu movies at the theaters which are no longer here anymore um, so I think as an adult it's important to me to support Chinatown and to create spaces where families can come and really ex explore our community and learn more um, about being Chinese, being Asian American, um, and also being part of, of New York. For the past uh, six years, I've been doing a lot of work in Chinatowns around the U.S. Uh, around questions of gentrification, intergenerational dynamics, and community resilience. So we did a West Coast Solidarity Chinatown tour of four different Chinatowns on the West Coast, including Vancouver, Seattle, San Francisco, and Los, Los Angeles just to see the kind of changes that the communities they were facing, the housing uh, issues, what uh, seniors, what tenants, community organizers were having conversations around and how the struggles here in Manhattan's Chinatown were connected to what was happening uh, in other Chinatowns. And so a lot of the photos here, depicted here, are is from that journey and documents the ways in which communities are engaging with displacement, gentrification, the changes, and also resisting in everyday, everyday forms in their everyday lives. The photos in this exhibit are from my year of traveling to Chinatowns around the world. In one year um, after I graduated from college, I was awarded a traveling fellowship to document stories of migration, displacement, and resilience across the Chinese diaspora. And where that came from were my questions about home, um, being so rooted in home in Chinatown here and with the Chinese diaspora, I was wondering what that looked like on a global level. And I was really curious to see what kinds of social issues were affecting um, the Chinese diaspora in different countries. And so in one year I traveled to the capital cities of eight different countries, starting in Latin America and moving to South Africa, China, Southeast Asia and Australia. And so the photos here today are a culmination of all of that in conversation with Diane's. I think that's one of the larger themes that are that is woven throughout the exhibit, themes of home, what it mean, what a home looks like, what what it feels like, and how it can be captured in photographs. So for us, having the line here is something that we see in our own homes. I'm thinking about my own grandma and the ways that she uses space, right? She hangs her towels um, in the bathroom just like this. And this is something that you know, we see on an everyday basis that we're close to and um, that builds community in many ways. The exhibit starts with me tracing my own family roots in China. So during this year of traveling, I traveled back to the four different villages that each of my grandparents are from. And I got to meet people who knew them and I got to see the places that they grew up in. And how it's connected to the rest of the photos here is um, all of these elders on the bottom and, and to, the, to the right are from Cuba. And they're all Chinese Cuban multiracial folks who are very active in the Chinatown. Um, in Havana's, Havana's Chinatown used to be one of the largest and oldest in Latin America until the revolution of 1959 uh, when Fidel Castro took over. And after that, Chinatown was really gutted of its core institutions, it lost a lot of its businesses, people left and immigrated. But these are the people who stayed and remains behind. And so I'm trying to highlight their stories and how a lot of them have their roots in the Guangdong province, 